Hello students. Today we are going to discuss about one of the very important topics of science that is electricity. I hope we are all aware that there are so many applications to electricity. Let us consider the room in which you are sitting right now. It consists of a fan, it consists of some tube lights, maybe in your home you have an electric iron. All these appliances, all these devices, they require electricity to work. Let's say I switch the button on and the bulb present in your room starts providing you light energy. With the same type of switch, when you press it on, you can get heat energy from an electric iron. So that means the output of this is heat energy or light energy. And we know that only some form of energy can be converted to some another. And so we can conclude that electricity is actually a form of energy. Now, if electricity is a form of energy, then how can we obtain this form of energy? Well, there are several such questions which we are going to answer in the course of this particular video. The first thing we need to understand are the three main concepts related to electricity. That is the concept of current, the concept of potential difference and the concept of resistance. So we will begin with the concept of current. Now to understand the concept of current, let us consider a metallic conductor. Now a metallic conductor is supposed to have large number of free electrons. So if this is a metallic conductor, inside this there will be large number of free electrons. Now there are certain things about a free electron which you are expected to know. That is a conductor which is having large number of free electrons will always have them in a state of random motion. That means all these electrons will always be in a state of random motion. So as of now we will consider the ends of the rod as A and B. So because these electrons are in random motion, it will be of no use to us. But now if you want to obtain current, our idea should be to ensure that all these electrons start to flow in one particular direction. To obtain that, we will connect a battery with this conductor. Let this be the battery. This will be the positive and this will be the negative terminal. Now the positive terminal of the battery is connected to end A of the conductor and so end A will become positive. The negative terminal of the battery is connected to end B and so B will become negative. Now as you see positive and negative terminals are there at the ends of the conductor. So A and B will now start attracting or repelling the electrons. So the positive end A and the negative electrons will have a force of attraction between them and so these electrons will be attracted towards point A. Similarly, if you talk about end B, the negative terminal and the negative electrons will have a force of repulsion between them and so point B will repel the electrons. So here we can clearly see that the electrons are going to go from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. This will cause the flow of electrons in one particular direction. All these electrons consist charge inside them and because electrons are negatively charged, the charge will then start to flow. This flow of charge inside a metallic conductor is what we call as electric current. So that means there will be a current which will be produced in the conductor which is obtained due to the unidirectional flow of electrons or you can say the charge present inside it. Now that we know the concept of current, let us try to understand the formula and the unit of electric current. So as far as the formula is concerned, current is always equal to charge upon time. As we understood that electrons start flowing through the conductor in one direction, which constitutes the flow of charge. And the flow of charge happens in a unit time. And so charge upon time is what we call as current. Now as far as the units are concerned, charge is always measured in a unit called as coulomb. Whereas time is always measured in a unit called as second. Now we know coulomb is denoted by the letter capital C, seconds is denoted by the letter small s and so ideally the unit of current should be coulomb per second. However, on the name of the scientist Andre Marie Ampere, the unit of current is considered to be ampere denoted by the letter capital A. So that means the SI unit of electric current is called as ampere. 
Now remember, in physics, whenever you come across a new unit, you will have to define that as well. So even here, we need to define what is 1 ampere. So to understand the definition of 1 ampere, let us take into consideration the same thing that we have done. Just consider that we have a charge flowing through a conductor and the magnitude of the charge is 1 coulomb. Let us assume that this charge flows for a time of 1 second. And I think we know that 1 upon 1 will always give you 1. So that means if a charge of 1 coulomb flows through a conductor for a time of 1 second, then the current is said to be 1 ampere. So we can just formulate this into a proper statement. So the statement for the definition of 1 ampere is as follows. If a charge of 1 coulomb flows through the conductor in 1 second, then the current flowing through the conductor is said to be 1 ampere. Now, as far as the units of current are concerned, there are some other convenient units as well. The other convenient units are as follows. 1 ampere can be expressed in terms of milliampere as well. So, we say that 1 ampere is 10 raised to 3 milliampere. Now, along with milliampere, the other smaller units are microampere and nanoampere. So, 1 ampere can be expressed as 10 raised to 6 microampere and we can say that 1 ampere can also be expressed as 10 raised to 9 nanoampere. That means if you want to convert the current from ampere to milliampere, for that you need to multiply by the conversion factor which is 10 raised to 3. That means if you want to convert from ampere to microampere, again we multiply by the conversion factor that is 10 raised to 6 and if you want to convert from ampere to nanoampere, we multiply by the conversion factor that is 10 raised to 9, vice versa, which means if you want to convert from milliampere to ampere, in that case we will always divide by 10 raised to 3. If you want to convert from microampere to ampere, we divide by 10 raised to 6 and 10 raised to 9 would be when you want to convert from nano ampere to ampere. So these are the different conversion factors between the other units of electric current. Remember there is only one SI unit and the SI unit of electric current is ampere. The other units that we have are milliampere, microampere and nano ampere with these being the conversion factors. Well, now we will focus upon another very important concept out here that is the direction of electrons and the direction of current. Now you would imagine why are we considering the two as separate because electrons are what constitutes the direction or basically electrons are what constitutes current. So why should the direction be considered separately? Well, you will understand that in the course of this video. So talking about the direction of electrons. So I think it is very simple to understand that electrons were flowing from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. So without any more arguments, we'll just write down that electrons will always flow from negative to positive terminal. Now when we talk about the direction of current, I would want to let you know that this is not exactly what we expect. Even though electrons contribute the flow of current, the direction of current is considered to be positive to negative. Now this is something which we need to discuss upon because when the concept of current or when the concept of electricity was discovered, people were not aware about the charged particles called as electrons because electron discovery happened much after the concept of current and concept of electricity. So people at that time had an idea only about the positive charges. Now you imagine if it would have been filled with the positive charges. If electrons are flowing from negative to positive, definitely the positive charges would flow from positive to negative. So those people or the earlier scientists considered current to flow due to the flow of the positive charges and so as per them, current flew from positive terminal to negative terminal. However, with the discovery of electrons and also the recognition that electrons are the only mobile particles, that means only they can move the protons or the positive charges cannot move. So even though the concept was changed, the direction remained to be the way it was. And so to avoid any confusion, we say that the direction of current that is positive to negative is considered as the conventional direction of current. 
where by saying conventional we mean that it is as per what we have received from the earlier scientists if you want to know the electronical direction of current then without any doubt it would be negative to positive remember this is electronical direction of current now if someone asks you the direction of current as a student i am confused what should i say should i say positive to negative or should i say negative to positive well if it's direction of current remember we always go by the convention so it would be positive to negative however as an additional knowledge we should be aware that current flows negative to positive electronically now practically speaking the direction of current does not really matter consider i have a tube light whether the wire is entering from the left and exiting from the right or from the right and exiting from the left does not make any difference the charges would still flow through the tube light and the current would still be generated so practically speaking the direction of current is not really a cause of concern but when we study theory it does play a major role and so we will always be considering the direction of current from positive to negative terminal so that means in the circuit as well we will be denoting the current with the help of arrows starting from positive and ending on the negative terminal so let's say this is the arrow for current as we know current is denoted by the letter i the current would then go here current will be denoted by the letter i then it will enter the conductor exit from here denoted by the letter i and ultimately current comes back to the negative terminal of the battery so this is how we represent current in a circuit